Dr. George Tiller was murdered by Scott Roeder in Kansas last year. Scott Roeder made clearer than clear after his arrest and at his trial that the goal of that murder was to stop the provision of legal abortion in the United States. There are very few doctors left in the U.S., only a handful, who are willing to brave the violence and intimidation that it takes to work in the specialized field of complicated and later abortions like George Tiller did. In the wake of the terrorism that took George Tiller's life, there are a couple of ways that elected officials could have reacted. One way would be to recognize the real threat faced by these doctors who are providing a legal service in the United States and take steps to support them and protect them. Another approach would be to join in the attack from the legislative side. After Dr. Tiller was murdered, his friend and colleague, Dr. Leroy Carhart, who operates his own clinic in Bellevue, Nebraska, started providing some services that Dr. Tiller did before his death, but obviously could not anymore. That decision prompted groups like Operation Rescue to shift their focus. Operation Rescue, of course, had moved to Wichita, Kansas, specifically to harass Dr. George Tiller years before his death. Their new focus after Tiller was assassinated has been Dr. Carhart's clinic to specifically, uh, quote, encourage and train pro-lifers who are working with us on this project to stop Carhart from becoming the next George Tiller. So Carhart's days in Nebraska could be numbered. How did Nebraska's elected officials react to the targeting like that of one of their constituents after another doctor who did the same thing had been murdered in Kansas? How did they react to a doctor regularly getting death threats for doing his job, a job that is legal under American law? Uh, Nebraska politicians changed the law. LB 1103, passed by a vote of 44 to 5 in the Nebraska legislature, signed into law yesterday by Governor Dave Heineman. It bans most abortions in Nebraska after 20 weeks on the basis of this theory of fetal pain. It's the nation's first law restricting abortions that relies on that rationale. Senator Mike Flood, speaker of the Nebraska legislature, who sponsored the measure, said he did it as a direct attempt to stop the legal medical services provided by Dr. Carhart. He had a burden when he heard Leroy Carhart last summer upon the death of George Tiller, when he heard Leroy Carhart talk about uh, how he wanted to make Nebraska the late-term abortion capital of the Midwest. And Speaker Flood took up that gauntlet, and has it has resulted in the passage of LB 1103. For that's the executive director of Nebraska Right to Life talking about the motivation for this bill that just passed uh, in the Nebraska legislature. And the new abortion ban in Nebraska will take effect on October 15th unless the courts stop it first. Joining us now is Tracy Wheats. She's a director at the Bixby Center for Global Reproductive Health. She's an associate professor at the University of California at San Francisco. Professor Wheats, thanks very much for coming back on the show. Appreciate your time. Thank you for having me back. Uh, do you expect that this new law will take effect? Do you expect that it's likely to be stopped by the courts? Well, it certainly is unconstitutional uh, according to current law, which says that states may only ban abortion or uh, with the health exception after the point of viability, which is after the um, what the legislature is saying is the point at which the fetus can feel pain. Several pro-choice groups have focused in specifically on this fetal pain rationale and said that they think that codifying that into law is essentially designed as a challenge to Roe versus Wade, that this is legislation that's designed to get Roe v. Wade before the Supreme Court again because they think that it would be overturned by the conservative majority there. Do you think that's the case? Do you think that's what's going on? Well, I definitely think this is a direct challenge to Roe v. Wade. I think it's important, Rachel, to point out that the scientific evidence does not support that the fetus can feel pain until well into the third trimester. I was very disappointed this morning to read the New York Times suggest that there is sort of contested science around whether or not the fetus can feel pain at the point at which the Nebraska legislature is uh, asserting that it can when the published scientific literature does not support that. The other law that uh, Governor Heineman signed into law yesterday and did it at the same signing ceremony uh, mandates that doctors sort of extensively mentally screen women who come for abortion services. I, I don't, I have to admit, I don't understand it. As far as I read it, I, I feel like their allegation here is that women have abortions because they're crazy. Is that the implication that they're making here? Well, I think there's two things. 
like the fetal pain bill, this is an extensive misuse of science. Um, this bill says that doctors need to inform women of any characteristic that may be a demographic characteristic, that may be a social characteristic, that may be a health condition, that may be a mental health condition that has been shown to be associated with a problem after abortion. It's a long list of things. People don't know what it means, but it's clearly meant to say to women, if you have any kind of health condition, you need to know that you might suffer poorly after an abortion, something that, again, science doesn't support. Professor Tracy Wheats, uh, director at the Bixby Center for Global Reproductive Health and an associate professor at UCSF, uh, University of California, San Francisco. Thanks very much for joining us tonight. I have a feeling this is gonna, not going to be our last discussion of this Nebraska bill. Thank you. I hope we can keep talking about it. Thanks.